Good morning, friends. Today is day 12 of reading. This is our last day of reading because on um, Monday, it starts your spring break. And so you will not have to do work for next week. Um, and then when you get back from spring break, you'll have a new learning packet so that you can keep on learning while we are away from each other. And so today, for day 12, you are analyzing author's craft. You already did this on day four when I was using a bike like Sergio and you were using um, Peter's chair. As a reminder, your author's craft, you're looking at what your author does that stands out, how they wrote the book, and why do you think the author wrote it that way? So it's our what and our why. What did the author do while they were writing it and why does that matter? Because our authors make very purposeful decisions just like you guys do when you're writing your books. And so now we have to find, hmm, what are those choices that our authors make? It could be dialogue, it could be punctuation, it could be repetition, um, there's a lot of different options that it can be, and if you go and look on our page, Miss West made a great chart um, that can help you kind of think about what are some things that author's craft can be. So I'm going to be looking at it for Violet's music today, and then you guys are going to be using Jabari Jumps and finding what the author did in that story and why the author chose to write it that way. So, if I'm looking at Violet's music, I'm going to think, hmm, what are the choices my author made? And one thing that really stood out to me was every time that Violet had an instrument, the author put these, like, music words, these music sounds, at the end of it. And it said, boom, shake, beat, shake. And that was when she had her rattle. And when she had her horn, it said, woo, woo, woo. And when she had her guitar, it was plink, pluck, plink, plink, pluck, pluck. And then she has her real guitar, and it's twang, twang, yeah, yeah, twang, twang, yeah. And so I noticed every time, oh, and then at the very end, when all of the band is together, they have all the music words for all the different instruments. And so I noticed that my author constantly repeated that throughout the story. Every time there's an instrument, my author included the instrument sounds that that could possibly make. And I was thinking, why would she do that? Hmm, that's so interesting that she would repeat that. But what does it add to the story? And it, for me, it helped me kind of hear the different instruments that she was playing. So I knew she was playing the rattle because there is a boom, shake beat shake, I think it was. Um, and so it helps you hear the instruments. It emphasizes the type of instrument that Violet is playing at the moment. Then every time she would look for somebody to play, she always had this um, part of the story. It would say, could she find other babies to play along? No, she couldn't, but she'd keep looking. Violet played her music all alone. Could she get her family to play with her? No, she couldn't, but she'd keep on looking. Violet blew her horn all alone. Could she find the fellow guitarist buried in the sand? No, she couldn't, but she'd keep looking. Violet played her guitar all alone. And so I thought about that. Okay, again, my author had repetition. She kept repeating that little paragraph. Could she find somebody to play with? No, she couldn't, but she'd keep playing. Um, she played all alone. And so uh, my author used repetition. That was the craft, repetition. And now I'm going to think about why did she keep repeating that little paragraph of information? And it's because I think it means that the author wanted to show how Violet was never going to stop looking. She's very persistent. And by repeating that over and over, we get to see how persistent, how Violet's never going to stop no matter what. So it doesn't matter that nobody's playing with her. She's going to keep looking for somebody to play with her. And the last part, and I know a lot of you do this in your writing, so it really stood out to me as soon as I saw it, is... On this page, what do you guys notice about that first word? What comes after that very first word? 
That's right. It has a dot, dot, dot. That's our ellipses. And our ellipses, that is a punctuation choice that our author made. And our ellipses is telling us, oh, dramatic pause, pause for effect, drum roll, oh, something big is happening after this. And so I know a lot of you use that in your writing when you want to show, oh, stop, oh my goodness, this just happened. Um, and so my author chose to include the ellipses because she wanted a dramatic pause. She wanted you to know, hey, something big is coming. Wait, wait, <gasps> here it is. And so those are the ways that my author made some purposeful decisions to help um, make her story what it was. And so I want you to go ahead and pick up Jabari Jumps, rewatch the video if you would like to, or reread it in your packet. And I want you to look for purposeful punctuation, any dialogue that might be purposeful. I want you to look for word choice. It could be figurative language, so some metaphors or similes. Um, or if something could be compared. And I want you guys to decide, hey, why did my author include this? And tell us some reasons why they chose to do that. Alrighty, friends, have a great day and get to work.